a chimpanzee by the name of Buck was shot and killed in Pendleton, Oregon. After escaping from his backyard cage and in a state of agitation, Buck attacked both his owner and her daughter. We need an ambulance and we need an armed deputy. What's going on? My, uh, my pet chimpanzee has attacked my daughter. She's bleeding profusely and the animal has to be shot. Okay. It has attacked my 50-year-old daughter. She needs an ambulance. The ambulance cannot get to her because um, I've locked myself in the basement with her. I can't get out to get my own gun. Okay. She's on the patio. You're going to have to do a headshot. Who suffer bites and extensive injuries on their legs, arms, and abdomens. With a daughter barricaded down in the basement, Buck's owner called authorities to the scene and stated that Buck must be shot because the 200-pound ape could not be subdued. She emphasized that the department must send more than one police officer because she was worried that one would not be enough. But the police arrived and shot Buck dead, later stating that they had no other choice but to kill Buck in order to provide medical aid to the woman and her daughter. The woman kept Buck as a pet for 17 years, although almost every article summarizing the events leading up to Buck's sudden death state that it's unclear what caused Buck to attack. But the truth is, what happened was no mystery. The simple answer is that nothing prompted this attack. It was within Buck's wild nature as a chimpanzee to attack anything or anyone he viewed as a threat. Without any friends or allies of his own kind, Buck would have felt constantly threatened in his alien captive environment. A far cry from his natural habitat, Buck was acting on his instincts as a wild animal, which could not be distinguished even after 17 years living among humans as a pet. Buck's story, alongside several other hunting incidents, including that of Charla Nash, whose face and hands were severely mauled by Travis, a friend's pet chimpanzee underlined the real dangers that owning primates poses to public safety. These dangers are not exclusive to owning great apes. Numerous people have reported violent attacks involving all primate species in private possession, including capuchins, lemurs, and baboons, indicating that irrespective of species or size, all of these animals are wild animals. Fortunately, private ownerships of primates is now illegal in Oregon. No one can obtain a new permit, though those who acquired permits before 2010 may can maintain possession of their exotic animals. Oregon remains just one of 22 U.S. states that have already taken steps to ban private ownerships of primates. Sadly for Buck, these regulations came too late to save him from a life of cruel captivity and a violent death. The Captive Primate Safety Act, which was reintroduced to Congress on May 12, 2021, would institute a federal-level ban on the private ownership of non-human primates and restriction on public interactions with any non-human primates. Devin Showy says, we need this bill to pass not only for the sake of public safety, but also to preserve the lives of beautiful and innocent non-human primates, our closest animal relatives, who like Buck the chimpanzee, so frequently paid the ultimate price simply for being the wild animal that he was. Yeah, this one is, but... oh. We're sending a deputy right now. Hang on one second. Okay, okay I'm typing this up right now. One because the eight, if, if the eight gets a drop on him, he's gone too. Worse? Uh, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, he's she, got to be put down. You're both locked in the basement, correct? We're both locked in the basement, yes. And they've got to get do a headshot on the ape. Don't say, oh, it's cute to come here. It will attack them. Is there somebody there? Okay, are you safe? Okay.